Welcome to another example on how to graph and find the major components of a hyperbola when the equation is given in standard form. The first thing we need to recognize is that the form of the equation tells us whether we'll have a vertical or horizontal transverse axis. So looking at our equation, since we have the y part of the equation minus the x part of the equation, we are going to have a vertical transverse axis, which means the hyperbola will open up and down. So I always think of this as if the positive fraction is the y part, we have a vertical transverse axis. If the x part of the equation is positive, then we have a horizontal transverse axis. So to review this, again if the x part of the equation is first minus the y part, we'll have a horizontal transverse axis, so the hyperbola opens left and right. If the y part of the equation is first minus the x part, we have a vertical transverse axis and the hyperbola opens up and down. Now that we know we have a vertical transverse axis, let's go ahead and find the center of the hyperbola. It'll have coordinates h, k, and since we have the quantity x plus two, the x coordinate is negative two, and because we have the quantity y minus three, the y coordinate is positive three. So negative two, three is our center. Next, the denominator of the first fraction, or the positive fraction in our equation, is equal to a squared, and the denominator of the fraction we're subtracting is equal to b squared. So we know that a squared must equal nine, and b squared must equal 16. So if a squared equals nine, the positive value of a would be three, and if b squared equals 16, the positive value of b is equal to four. So knowing the value of a and b allows us to find the vertices, which are the two endpoints of the transverse or major axis, as well as the endpoints of the conjugate axis, sometimes called the minor axis. Because we have a vertical transverse axis, the two vertices will be a units above and below the center. And since a is equal to three, this is the center, one vertex would be here, three units above the center, the other vertex would be three units below the center, or here. So notice the coordinates would be negative two, zero, and negative two, six. Again, these are also the endpoints of the transverse axis. And I will find the foci later to find the endpoints of the conjugate axis the endpoints will be b units to the left and right of the center. Since this is the conjugate axis that has a length of two times b, where the center is the midpoint. So if b is equal to four, one endpoint would be four units to the left of the center. Here, the other endpoint would be four units to the right of the center, which would be here. And again, this segment here would be the conjugate axis or minor axis. Looking at the coordinate plane, we can see the coordinates would be negative six, three, and two, three. Now we could have found the vertices by adding and subtracting three to the y coordinate of the center, and we could find the endpoints of the conjugate axis by adding and subtracting four from the x coordinate of the center if we wanted to. But I think doing it graphically, it makes a lot more sense. Now from here we're going to sketch a rectangle that'll help us sketch the asymptotes of the hyperbola where the four endpoints that we have here will be the midpoint of each side of the rectangle. So the rectangle would look like this. Notice how the length of these two sides would be 2a the length of these two sides would be 2b. And the asymptotes of the hyperbola would contain the diagonals of this rectangle, so one asymptote would be this line here, and the other asymptote would be this line here. And having these graphed on the coordinate plane will make it much easier for us to find the equation of these asymptotes, but before we do this, Let's find the coordinates of the two foci. And again, because we have a vertical major axis, the two foci will be c units 
above and below the center. We don't have the value of c, but we can find c using the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is always true for a hyperbola. Remember, we already know a squared and b squared. So using our equation and the known values of a squared and b squared, which means c squared must equal a squared or nine plus b squared, which is 16, c squared equals 25, we're only concerned about the positive value of c, so we'll take the principal square root of both sides. The square root of 25 is five, so we have c equals five. Well, if c equals five, that means the two foci are five units above and below the center. So one focus would be here, and the other focus would be five units below the center, or here, which means the coordinates would be negative two, eight, and negative two, negative two. We could also find these coordinates by adding and subtracting five from the y coordinate of the center. Now before we graph our hyperbola, let's find the equations of the asymptotes. Let's start by finding the slope of each of these lines. And we can do this using the values of a and b, or just using the coordinate plane. Let's take a look at this line first that has a positive slope. To find the slope, let's use the center of the hyperbola, this point here, and this point here. Notice if we want to move from this point to this point, we have to go up a units, or up three units, and write b units, or write four units. So if this is three and this would be four, the slope of this line is positive three-fourths. So we'll call this m sub one. And now looking at the second line, or this line here that has a negative slope, if we use the center and this point here, notice how we'd have to go down three units, or down a units, and write four units, or write b units. So this would actually be negative three, and this would be positive four. So we can see the slope of this line would be negative three-fourths. So m sub two is equal to negative three-fourths. This is really all we need to find the equations of these two lines, since we have the slopes, and we also know one point on both lines. So we'll find the equations using point-slope form of a line, and then we'll solve the equation for y. So again, we're gonna use point-slope form of a line. We know both lines pass through the center, or this point here, where one line has a slope of three-fourths, the other line has slope negative three-fourths, which means one equation would be y minus three equals the slope three-fourths times the quantity x minus negative two, or x plus two. The second equation would just be y minus three equals negative three-fourths times the quantity x plus two. So these are the equations of the two asymptotes. Let's go ahead and solve for y. So we'll clear the parentheses and then solve for y. So we'll have y minus three equals, here we'll distribute, three-fourths x, three-fourths times two would be six-fourths, or three-halves, so plus three-halves. And we'll go ahead and add three to both sides. So we have y equals, this would be three-fourths x, Adding three is the same as adding six halves. Three halves plus six halves would be nine halves. And then for the second line, again, we'll first clear the parentheses. Here we're distributing negative three-fourths, so it's negative three-fourths x, and then minus six-fourths, or minus three halves. And then again, we'll add three to both sides. So we have y equals negative three-fourths x, and then negative three-halves, this would be the same as plus six-halves, that would be positive three-halves or plus three-halves. So these would be the two equations of our asymptotes. Now let's go ahead and graph our hyperbola. We know it's going to contain the vertices and approach the asymptotes. So the branch on top would look something like this. And the branch on the bottom would look something like this.
Okay, I hope you found this explanation helpful.